Hello guys, today there will be a video about filament admin panel, a bonus video to my course. After publishing this course about Laravel filament admin, I received a few questions, so I decided to shoot a bonus section to this course. The original course finishes with lesson number 20 something or 30 something about customizing the layouts. And today I will add a new lesson both here on YouTube for free and inside the course about repeater field of form builder. So you would be able to use has many relationships to add many items within the form as an example invoice and invoice items. Let's see how it works in filament. And if you want the full course to start with filament with all those lessons, the link will be in the description below. Now let's see how repeater works. I got asked quite a few questions about filament asking to shoot more and more topics and one of them is repeater field. It is basically used for relationships or JSON fields with more than one additional row in addition to the main row. For example, you have a resource of team and then team members and for each member you may have name and row. So this would be saved either as JSON or as relationship. And I've tried to simulate that with invoices and invoice items. Pretty typical scenario, right? So for example, you would want to create an invoice, add invoice number, invoice date, and then add products in a similar fashion like here. Let's do it step by step. I've prepared some parts already. So the database table for invoices is this migration, then invoice items with foreign ID to invoice and then to the product which already exists in our database from earlier lessons. So products here, so you would be able to choose from products. And then for each item, we save the price and the amount of ordered products. And then the model is pretty simple, eloquent model, invoice belongs to a user and has many invoice items, An invoice item is just fillable. So these are my preparations. And then I've generated a filament resource, with just simple make filament resource invoice and prepared a few more things like navigation group, navigation sort. And in the table, we show invoice date, number and username. And in the form for now, we have only text input for the invoice number with some default. You can add some more logic for auto generating the invoice numbers. That's a separate video and even outside of filament topic and then the date picker. So this is what you can see on the screen now. Now let's add products with repeater. So here in the card below the placeholder, we have this comment. And instead of that comment, we do repeater make and the name would be invoice items, the same as the relationship name here, because it will be a relationship. So one way to set up the repeater is to use JSON column. Otherwise, you can use a relationship here by just providing the relationship as a method, and then it would be saved as a relationship has many items in my case. And then we have the schema for that repeater. And also we may provide a few more items, like for example, default items would be one, one item per invoice by default. Then let's add a visual column span of full. Actually, we don't need comma here and schema is underlined because it should be an array and we will fill it in in a minute. And for now, let's add any text field, text input, make something, something like that. Let's refresh our page. We refresh and we have invoice items with something. And then we can click add to invoice items and something is repeated. We may delete any of the items and then they would be saved after clicking create but the save would fail at this point because we don't have any something in the database. So let's work on the actual form and the schema. And to save you some time, I've pre-written behind the scenes a few pieces of code for each of the fields. So we do select from product with options of that select coming from product query plug, then it is required and it will be reactive and we will perform the auto refresh of the price depending on the product chosen. And we will get to that in a minute. But for now, it's just a select from database. Then we have product amount numeric text input. So we can specify 
two or three or any other number and then text input price disabled because it will be just an informational field which would be auto completed by the product as i told you and then i've added a few column spans and columns md10 to make it more visually appealing and again we can add more items or delete some items next let's work on actually populating the price by product and to do that in addition to reactive we may specify another method called after state updated and there's a callback function required and this will be quite a complicated callback function so it's not a short it will be with two parameters so state and then callback callable set so set some value and inside of that callback function we will have querying the product by that state so product would be product model find state and then if we find that product which we should but just in case let's add an if if we find then we set the field name of price to product price like this and also since the price is in cents in our database, but visually we need to show that in dollars, we do number format divided by 100 with two decimal symbols. And let's refresh our page. And now let's choose some option for the product. And as you can see, price is automatically here. It is a disabled field, but you can choose the amount and that price would be saved into the database. Actually, it should not be saved for a reason because the price should be also in the invoice items i've made it so it is an integer field as well in the invoice item structure of product price so it should be in sense so actually we need to have two fields one price would be visible and disabled and then hidden field which would contain actual value in the integer so we add another field in addition to those text inputs hidden make product price which would be the actual field name here in the database product price and we also make it disabled for any editing just in case as for that price it should be dehydrated which means it wouldn't be saved into the database so we add dehydrated false like this so now we have our form how do we save the data for saving it should happen almost automatically but we need to set the user id for the invoice so we get to the invoice resource page of create so invoice resource pages create invoice and in here we define some values before saving again for saving you time from watching me typing i've just pasted it in it's pretty simple mutate form data before create i actually love that about filament it's pretty readable so you can read it almost in english language so before create we set the user id to the logged in user now let's try to save our invoice i'm not sure if it would work from the first time because we made a lot of changes but let's see and if something goes wrong we will fix the bugs so we choose the product we choose the amount of two we add another item another product let it be amount one and we create and see what happens error so invoice items product price of course i didn't specify the logic of that hidden field in the invoice resource we added a hidden field but it doesn't get any value let's close the sidebar so in this if product we also need to set the product price so product price the actual value would be the original product price in cents integer without any manipulations here okay let's refresh again refresh select something something here another product with different amount for example we create and it is successful we have our invoice with in the database invoices with user id set automatically invoice items are here so this is how you can work with repeater fields with has many relationship as an example.